All right, so for those of you who are just getting in, uh, we've got breakfast in the back and we have some t-shirts and swag over here for you to pick up. Uh, but in the interest of time, we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you guys for all joining us. Uh, we are Manta Network. We are building a privacy protocol for Web3 and we are building using the Substrate framework. So we're specifically uh, building within the Polkadot ecosystem. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to privatize various crypto assets that exist as layer ones on uh, Polkadot, as well as the assets that they create within their ecosystems. So for example, on Moonbeam, right, when they have ERC-20 assets, right, those assets are something that we're looking to privatize as well. Uh, we've been building in this project for approximately one and a half years now. And um, we have investors like Polychain, who are, is also here in the crowd as well, as well as uh, CoinFund, Parify, um, and a lot of other notable VC funds that have been supporting us for this, for this time period. Um, and during this time, right, I think one of our biggest accomplishments has been the fact that we have launched our testnet. And so for those of you that haven't tried it out, right, we'll be going into an overview of the testnet, some stats and some milestones that we've accomplished since we've launched it about a month and a half ago. Uh, we also have recently secured a parachain on Kusama. And that means that we'll be able to launch mainnet pretty quickly. Um, and so as soon as the testnet, you know, gets a little bit more, I guess, testing, as well as we're releasing a version two of it, uh, once that's ready, we'll be pushing it on to uh, Calamari Network, which is our Kusama parachain. But Brandon will be talking a little bit more about testnet v2 later. So I won't get into too much of the details there. Um, but yeah, so with that being said, right, I'll introduce Shuma up on the stage and he'll give a brief technical overview of exactly how Manta Network is implemented. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks for coming here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, happy to share about what we have been building, Manta. Uh, we, like Kenny said, we started the project like uh, um, 1.5 1, 1. years ago, and we have uh, a couple of not. And let's get started. Uh, so first, what is Manta, right? So we are building the privacy layer for Web3. And what does that mean is that uh, we are actually a privacy utility for our parity assets and uh, well, going to be pretty soon for all the blockchain assets. So first, we are actually building in uh, sub using Substrate framework and also uh, becoming a parachain in both Kusama and Polkadot. I just talk a little bit why we are building uh, uh, in the dot Sama ecosystem and trying to become a parachain. So basically, um, one of our core technologies uh, like a zk snark, right? So basically this requires extremely high performance uh, blockchain framework, right? So basically we choose a uh, dot sama uh, parachain ecosystem for like these four reasons. First, it has a very high performance consensus, right? So as a parachain, uh, we can enjoy a lot. It's uh, like a state of art proof of stake consensus. And also, um, so basically we can share the security guarantee of the relay chain so that uh, we don't have to build our own consensus from scratch. And second is that it has an extremely high performance worsen runtime, right? So I can, um, I can give you some number here, right? So we actually did a benchmark for similar kind of tasks, right? It's about like 100X to like 1000X faster than EVM, right? So for the, for the current implementation. And third, right? It actually has a pretty nice feature called XEM. Uh, it's kind of jargon here but it actually enables like native cross-chain communication within the ecosystem, right? So it's a, you can think of a kind of like a programming language you can codify uh, in your own kind of runtime so that you get uh, communication, including but not limited to token transfer with other parachains um, here, right? So, and last but not least, right? It's a very modular and powerful um, blockchain framework uh, enable us to customize a lot of things. Um, so with that, let me introduce you the first product where we were going to launch and Manta. So the first product we called Manta Pay, right? So what's a, the what's a big deal of it, right? So this is a, a BYOT, which is bring your own token, a private payment protocol, right? I think um, 
many of you guys per, probably heard of some protocols like uh, uh, Corongo Cache or Zcash in the spring, right? So essentially at its heart, uh, Menta Pay is a multi-asset shielded payment protocol and guarded by ZK Stock, right? So what's special about it is that uh, we don't have any opinions on which kind of token you are using, right? As, uh, as it's right now, right? If you have any kind of like a substrate based tokens, especially like a related and parachain tokens within the ecosystem, uh, we can privatize that. And in the future, right? We're going to do cross chain bridges to pri privatize like all the crypto tokens. So how does it work? Is that you just simply uh, get into our app and cause a mint function, right? It will become a shielded token. And after the token is shielded, right? So you can have a uh, freely transfer to different shielded addresses uh, within Menta, right? And uh, the, the cool part here is that all the shielded tokens first, uh, it's using a UTXO model so that uh, um, it has way better privacy than any kind of like a account model based uh, privacy protocol. And second, your privacy is guarded by ZK Stock. And then, um, so it's a permissionless work. If you want to claim back your uh, private token to the public token, you can do so by uh, just calling the reclaim function, right? Uh, so let's dive a little bit deeper in this uh, Mentapi architecture. So what essentially Mentapi has been built is that first we have the Menta parachain runtime, right? It's a soft trade based uh, blockchain runtime. And, and then um, we build Menta Pay as a pallet, right? Pallet, you can think of a module in the runtime. So the core part is a Menta Pay circuit. It's a zero knowledge proof circuit uh, that's built on Quanta. Um, it's sort of like a third generation of the ZK uh, zero knowledge proof systems. And we have a, a zero knowledge proof verifier deployed on chain. So the process of you are sending a private transaction is first, uh, we have the Menta ZKP signer. This is on your own computer, right? So have manage all your secrets. And then it generates a like Pi transfer here, which is zero knowledge proof. And we'll send it to the uh, verifier. And you can see here, because the Pi transfer is a zero knowledge proof, uh, it doesn't leak any information whatsoever, right? So this is a this is a very high level picture of the mental pay architecture. I mean, I, I think we have perfect privacy here. I, <laughs> Are these slides available? We make them available. You're good. All right, we're all good. That's, that's good. Right, so I just show you the architecture. I know. So basically, Manta's position is a privacy utility, right? At first, we are a, like a Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem enabler. Well, enable like, a, so for example, uh, because we privatize the assets in the ecosystem, right? We can, broader, we can bring like a much better value to other projects, right? So basically, this is our uh, value proposition. So for example, right? If uh, Manta plus Moonbeam, we can have like private EVM assets, like Menta plus Akala, we, have, we can have private stable coin. And uh, Menta plus Interlay, we can have private BTC. Oh, by the way, these uh, internet folks, they have a presentation uh, right after us. Please join them, it's super cool. We basically have a decentralized BTC in the Polkadot ecosystem. You can do DeFi, you can do all the, all, all the different kinds of applications, right? And last but not least, right? Like Menta plus Fala, we can have like a private e-commerce, right? So this is really our position here, right? Become a thought stama ecosystem enabler. Um, so last but not least, right? So I think this is our view of the future uh, kind of blockchain world, right? So we're committed to be a like a multi-chain plus core chain blockchain world, in the sense that uh, our first step is going to be 
uh, through the XDM mechanisms to privatize assets in the dot semi ecosystem. Uh, but we'll be pretty soon we're working with the decentralized bridges, uh, for example, like Acceler, to um, able like a, to bridge Manta to the broader ecosystem. For example, all these um, like a, a Ethereum, like a Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, and Polygon, et cetera, et cetera, right? So um, this, is a, uh, this, is a, this is already ongoing. Um, so actually, I, I think talk is cheap, right? So we actually uh, have been running a test net like a, uh, of the Manta Pay protocol since December. And uh, so this is a, a URL. You can uh, go and try our test net. So it has a very, very intuitive like, interface, right? You have public asset, you have private asset. You can um, like, uh, uh, convert the public asset to the private asset, send it to a new address, et cetera, et cetera, right? So just show you some statistics of our test net, right? So this is a screenshot I get from the uh, Block Explorer last night. Right, we have already like more than like a 1.5k users, and uh, so total transactions are actually more than like 17k, and uh, more than like a 20, 27 of them are private transactions. It's either like a private mint or like a private transfer, right? I think this really uh, like shows us like people. I mean, we are actually getting this without any kind of like a testnet incentives, right? It truly shows that. Um, the entire crypto world, like our, our community, they need privacy and they're very happy with, uh, uh, to try our product. Right. So that's, a, that's kind of like a brief uh, introduction of what we, what we have done so far. Um, so we, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Also, we have a Q&A session at the end of the, like, all the mental tech talk. Um, so here I will also briefly share what's, what's next for Manta. So I think at end of uh, Q1 2020, most likely end of the February or beginning of March, uh, we're going to launch the Manta Pay 2.0 testnet. Uh, I would not dive super deep here and uh, like our crypto engineer, Brandon, will actually introduce you to the testnet v2 for the all new features and all the ZKP improvements. Um, so yeah, and I, I will also would like to share with you uh, what's going on for Manta in an even like a longer future, right? So Manta is going to evolve to a bigger platform called Poseidon. So like what is Poseidon, right? So this is actually the next step what we're building here. Uh, Poseidon is actually a scalable L1 smart contract platform for the privatized assets, right? So um, you can see the keyword here. here. First we're L1, right? So Second, it's a smart contract platform that actually brings a programmability to the, all these private assets, right? So we just don't, we don't want just be, uh, hey, we just can privatize your asset, you can send to others. And uh, there is a much, much bigger world you can create by actually introducing programmability to the private asset. So I will not dive super deep into the details here. I just give you a brief overview, right? How does Poseidon work? And so essentially, uh, we are going to build an equivalent EVM equivalent layer for the programmability, right? So the way we are doing things here is that so first on the bottom layer, we have the Manta runtime. And then we are actually building all the different kind of uh, like a private, uh, like ZKP primitives here. For example, we have the uh, Manta pay circuit, which is our fungible token uh, ZKP circuit. We're also going to build the Manta NFT circuit, which is basically the long fungible token circuit. And then we're actually going to bridge that to the EVM using um, like private ERC20 and private ERC721 uh, and ERC1155 uh, like interface, right? So I think uh, this really a kind of an oversimplified picture. We did a lot of like hard research work to actually how to make this kind of like interface work, right? But essentially, uh, what uh, the result to the developer is that, uh, so you can very easily to create a, like a, a smart contract to manage this kind of like a, a private assets in the Poseidon uh, in the Poseidon platform. So, for example, right? So you can build your um, like decentralized exchanges for this private asset very easily, 
and you can do all the different kind of metaverse applications like gamify, like NFT markets, and also like DeFi lending, right? So always easy. So I just tell you one thing, right? We actually carefully reviewed all these uh, uh, potential uh, smart contracts that could migrate to Paseido, right? We take a look at the Uniswap V3, right? We find that uh, basically there is zero, zero nine code change. You can just port the uni Uniswap V3 uh, to this uh, Poseidon platform, right? So um, this is just kind of like a more uh, detailed uh, architecture picture just for the fungible token part. So you can see, right? So through the XCM and through the decentralized token bridges, right? Uh, so uh, Poseidon really can be the kind of like a privacy hub and also enable many, many more uh, like exciting applications for uh, this like a private smart contract world. And uh, I think that's, uh, um, so um, I will end up here. And uh, next, I just want to, uh, um, so I, like, please stand up for all the Menta uh, like uh, engineers. Just want to uh, show you, this is uh, like our engineering team. And uh, we're hiring, and uh, we're hiring like a, a backend cryptography, full stack and business. And please talk to us if you want to join us. Yeah. And uh, with that, so, I think next, um, uh, Brandon is going to talk, uh, dive you deeper in the testnet v2. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Shimon. <clears throat> yeah, so um, I'm going to talk about a, a bit about testnet v2. So next one. So I'm just going to give a brief overview of uh, proof systems, zero knowledge proofs. These are the fundamental primitive that we build all of our systems based on. And then I'll talk about the UTXO model and how to privatize it. Uh, and then I'll go specifically into uh, the different upgrades that we have for this second version. Yeah, so what are proof systems? So proof systems are ways for computational agents to uh, ask questions to each other about the different states of the world they can see. So every person knows different amounts of information, every, uh, every node in the network knows the different amounts, every client. And what we do is we wanna have ways of querying those things um, and extracting specific bits of information out of any uh, computational agent. Um, a zero knowledge proof system is one where this kind of uh, this querying can happen, but the, these queries are only yes no questions, and the proof can only only reveals the, the the fact that the answer is yes. So you don't reveal anything else about the witness that the, the prover has um, their their internal state. Um, so. You know, there, there, are, there are many different kinds of proof systems. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about some, some later. Um, for example, signature schemes are a kind of proof system. Um, Merkle tree membership proofs are a kind of proof system. These are used all the time, not even in private systems, right? Proof systems are just a very general object, but uh, for our thing, we need very general zero knowledge proof systems. So how does this work? Basically, you have this construction called a constraint system. And what it is, is you have a way of representing uh, different properties of the witness um, and you want uh, all these properties to be uh, simultaneously satisfied. So, um, uh, for example, like if you're if you're doing a private uh, if you're doing a private transfer, you need, for example, that um, the user has enough balance, and when they uh, uh, send the token, that they can't also spend it later. So that's sort of two kinds of constraints, and they have to be satisfied at the same time. So um, uh, one of the more uh, commonly used constraint systems are uh, polynomial constraint systems. Um, Planck and R1CS are, are variants of this kind of uh, pattern. And the idea is um, you, you have this set of constraints that the query forms, and then you have a very general polynomial constraint uh, proving system that can take those constraints and generate proofs based on them. Um, but the main idea is that the less number of constraints, the better. So uh, if you can reduce the number of constraints, you pay less gas fees and you get uh, just faster overall performance of the entire network. So I'm gonna talk about now the UTXO model. So this is the standard UTXO model, for example, using Bitcoin. Um, and the idea is you have these uh, unspent transaction outputs that uh, every transaction takes in a few un uh, unspent transaction outputs from previous transactions and builds new ones. Uh, and the idea is you have two, you have two proof systems here. So you have this uh, signature proof system that says my secret key, uh, you know, can can uh, can spend this UTXO, and then you have another proof system called this uh, membership proof that says this UTXO is actually one of the ones that I can spend; it hasn't been spent already. Um, and you have this 
the system where you, you take your existing UTXOs and then you build new ones for someone that you're sending money to and you assign them to their public keys so that they can later, later spend them. So for the private version, we need to do the same kind of thing. We want to do it inside of a zero knowledge proving system, one of these general purpose systems. So the difference here is that the UTXOs in say Bitcoin, they just, they hold the value in, in the public state. So we need to, we want to encrypt the value. So we have these thing called notes which are the encrypted form of the uh, of the asset. And then again, you have a similar system where you have this, uh, you have these two main proof systems. You have the claim proof that you that you can spend it. And then you have the proof that it hasn't been spent before. Um, and then we build this, uh, we build this, the, the thing in the, in the box. This is done inside of a general purpose zero knowledge proving system. Uh, and then we, we post this part here. This part here goes on chain uh, and, and the, the, the verifier checks that this is consistent with the proof and then now you can spend the money. So this is basically the main idea. Like uh, basically every UTXO model has to be of this of this form. So now I'm going to talk about uh, testnet v2 upgrades. So um, one of the before I get into the slide, the the main idea remember is that the, you want to reduce the number of constraints. So anything that you can do to make these proofs as small as possible, make the, sorry make the constraint system as small as possible, you get much more performance out of it. So the the first thing we did was sort of a UX change. Um, in the old system, we were using a very simple uh, shielded address system, where basically the, the idea is you have to take some user secret and generate a new secret for every transaction. And this is just so that uh, basically that any transaction looks like any other and you can't, and you can't associate it with the original uh, public key or secret key of the user. But the system was a little too simple um, and it, it was basically, um, the address that you would have to give to somebody to, to send you money was only a one-time address. If they sent two things to that address, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. And so, if you if any of you have ever used the uh, the test net already, you'll see when you when you make a new key, you have to always generate new keys all the time. Um, in the new system, it's a little a little more tricky because we we need to make the the keys sort of last forever, but still be uh, not associated to the UTXO. So um, instead of you creating the ephemeral key that is used for the single transaction. It's the person who's, who uh, sends you the money who generates it. Um, so it's a little more complicated of a circuit. Um, but now we have a much better UX, just like a standard key pair system that, you, that you're familiar with if you use crypto already. Um, but there's some actual uh, optimizations we can do with this later. Uh, next slide. Uh, the other thing that we added was um, viewing keys. Viewing keys sit somewhere between secret keys and public keys. And what they let you do is they let you selectively disclose some information about your spending history um, without giving anybody the ability to spend it themselves. So, for example, if you need to do your crypto taxes, uh, April, um, <laughs> you're, you give your viewing keys, um, and what they let you do is uh, decrypt the, the state that uh, all the assets that have been sent to you, but this viewing key actually does not give anybody the power to, to spend the, the coins that you still have open, right? Um, and we did this in such a way, actually, to we're, we're adding no cost to the, the core protocol itself. So this is done entirely uh, in a way that actually makes it, uh, it doesn't make it any uh, more complicated in terms of the uh, implementation. Um, another very important thing uh, that, we, that we optimized was the, um, the membership proof. So membership proofs are the most expensive part, typically, uh, of these kinds of payment systems, uh, private payment. Um, and the idea is that you have this you have this Merkle tree, and at the bottom, the leaves there, those are all of the, uh, all the UTXOs that, are, that, have been, uh, that have been generated by the protocol. And you need to uh, prove that you own a particular one, and so you need to do this Merkle proof. Um, and for example, our Merkle tree is uh, def 20, so this is 20 times you have to re recursively apply a hash function. So if we can optimize this hash function a lot, we get, you know, let's say if we get a 1% saving on the hash function, we get a 20% saving overall. Like we have this repeated thing. So, what we need to do is we need to find the, the fastest possible hash function for this for the system that's also optimized for this polynomial constraint uh, um, uh, paradigm for, for proving systems. So the one that we chose was the uh, Poseidon hash function. Um, and yeah, next slide. Uh, so Poseidon is a very simple uh, repeated round based hash functions uh, similar to like the Shaw family, but it's um, but the idea is that it, it's based entirely on algebraic uh, operations in finite fields. So it's, it doesn't operate on like a, the bit level. Um, so 
these uh, zero knowledge proof systems, they're more optimized for these uh, algebraic constructions in finite fields. Um, and Poseidon is exactly the, the kind of thing that you would want in this, um, in this environment to reduce the number of constraints. Um, and uh, because we've been, so we, we start off as, an, uh, as a GRAS 16 R1CS based uh, proof system and we're, we're moving over to Planck. And actually we found uh, an optimization by protocol labs in their uh, file coin implementation. Uh, they use Merkle trees for their storage proofs um, and they also use Poseidon. Um, and the idea is that you can actually get more performance uh, in Planck based uh, and R1CS doesn't change when you add this optimization, but in Planck it does. And, uh, and basically you reduce the number of uh, field multiplications. Um, and in the future, we're gonna add even more functionality to Planck. Uh, we're working with um, a lot of different companies in the in the zk space to uh, really uh, maximize the the the, uh, the potential of Planck and all its Planck derivatives um, to uh, you know reduce constraints overall uh, for everyone. Next slide. So if you've used the signer before, uh, sorry, if you've used the testnet before, you'll know that it has these sort of three different uh, components. So you have the the web wallet, which is the user user interface for payments. So if you familiar, it's like a MetaMask style or Uniswap style thing. Um, but then we still have these, uh, we have the desktop signer, which is the actual uh, zero knowledge proof, the, the thing that constructs zero knowledge proofs. And this kind of operation is expensive. And so we want to get it as close to the hardware as possible. In the future, we want to migrate to uh, fully Wasm as the, as, the, as the technology improves and we get fat, uh, much better performance. But for now you have this uh, three, um, three component system. Um, so one of the things that we optimized was basically um, because the uh, because the, the, the signer is going to be generating the proofs, if the signer knows as much as possible about the state, they can optimize the um, it can optimize the the, the the data that it has to store. Um, so basically, um, if you have again remember that Merkle tree of all the UTXOs. Um, actually, what you can do is you can. Uh, remove some of the data in there that's not relevant for you once you've spent a token. So if you spent a token, that UTXO can't be spent again. So actually, the subtree that lives above that token can actually be uh, removed from memory. You can just produce a new hash for the top of that subtree. Um, and so we use the this optimized uh, storage model for the Merkle tree, and it's as close to the signer as possible. So we get we don't have to um, expend any information. Uh, uh, cost of sending information from the wallet to the signer is all stored in the signer now, and the signer should be more stable overall. If you've had, if you've seen the, the test net, sometimes the signer is a little uh, finicky, but now it's much more, uh, much more stable because of this uh, optimization. So yeah, that's uh, that's all I have for now. Um, are we taking questions now or, or later? Like, how do we, uh... yeah, so, um, yeah, so to repeat the question, um, how do we find, say, the, the file coin optimization, and uh, in general, how do we, uh, how do, we do this? So, um, you know, this entire space is, is very open source uh, friendly, and uh, a lot of projects are on GitHub, and, and we just do a lot of research in terms of, um, looking around and seeing what everyone else is doing. And, and people really like to share these kind of things. The, the open source uh, ethos is very strong in this community. Uh, and so people, people just like uh, you know, sharing their, their, their advancements that they have. And uh, you know, it's very friendly to that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, actually I, I didn't mention, so yeah, before I answer, so the our circuit now because of these optimizations is uh, is actually 10 times smaller than the Zcash sapling circuit. So the, the sort of the pioneers in the space. Um, but yeah, so the, right, so the, the question is, um, these payment circuits are simple, but what about smart contract circuits? Uh, could they be very complicated uh, and ex uh, potentially very expensive? Um, so there are there are different uh, there are different levels of privacy that you can add to a smart contract. Uh, you can have basically the no privacy version, and that would be just raw running on the virtual machine. Uh, that would be that would cost you the same gas fee as a regular contract. Then you can privatize, say, the um, 
the the, peop, the the identities involved in the contract. So if you if you send money to a contract, you can anonymize that part of the identity. So you only the only thing that you call, that you pay for is that anonymization. You don't pay for the circuit. You, you don't pay for the, the contract. Then the, the even higher level of privacy would be to put the entire contract inside the inside the zero knowledge proving system. That will cost you more, but yeah, you have you have a you have a yeah. So you, you have this uh, dial that you can uh, that you can switch for how much privacy you want on the thing. And actually, there um, there are some results that. Uh, that actually some things cannot be privatized, period. There's just no way to do it. For example, like uh, standard uh, constant function market makers cannot be privatized in the sense that uh, you always leak the amount of the transfer uh, because you have to update the AMM and you have to update the AMM state. And so that state, you can always extract out the like the trade um, a value. So there's no point in privatizing that because it just can't be privatized. So that kind of circuit it can be actually pretty small because you only need to privatize the... Uh, uh, the the um, the identity of the people involved in the in the trade. Yeah. I, I just want to add a little bit to the question. Uh, first, like thanks for the great question. So you can see kind kind of like uh, our like Poseidon approach that uh, because we are the zk expert, you don't have to be right. So basically, or keep adding the kind of the fundamental and composable primitives, so that and also kind of bridging that through the uh, like Ethereum pre-compiled interface to the EVM. So that, uh, so basically you can see the Manta K circuit and the Manta AMG circuit. I mean, you could have more, for example, the decentralized governance circuit are running extremely fast in the Watson runtime, right? So it's actually leaving out of the EVM. This is also for the performance optimization. And then on the EVM layer, right? So basically your uh, smart contract logic just need to do the public stuff, right? So this is, uh, so basically we firmly believe this is kind of a hybrid model are going to be the future because you can, Kind of like synaptically disclose like which part of the computation you want to be public and which kind of a, uh, computation you want to stay in private. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a high level overview of this kind of that. Yeah. Any more questions? All right. Uh, any question from the live stream? Um, not really. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Okay, so um, we just spent the first half of this sort of um, conversation really going into a technical deep dive of exactly how all this works. Um, and I kind of want to spend the, la the last part of this conversation focused around more of the question of uh, why does it matter, right? And so, you know, kind of to, to take that conversation a little deeper, uh, I've, um, I, I think we have uh, quite a few panelists that will be joining us today. And so I'd like to welcome the panelists up onto the stage right now, um, in, including Shumo as well. And uh, we'll, we'll have a more high-level conversation around, you know, blockchain and privacy, and you know what what role it plays today and and in the future.